monthly at Valhalla Park in Holt. Behind the baseball games and the family barbecues, a group of like-minded individuals gather to practice their beliefs. Many of them do this without telling their family or their friends where they're going because even though research shows their religion is one of the fastest growing in the country, what they call coming out of the broom closet still carries repercussions. Bodo Maestas, Calocchieri, Blessed Letha, dear friends. I, I think there is a, a really bad stigma on this. Um, just, it's witches and they worship the devil. So have I had people say you know, things like, you're going to hell or stuff like that to me? Oh, yes, numerous times. I've been accused of some terrible things. Is it difficult or easy in a community like Lansing to be interested in this or to practice this? in direct relation to that. My partner couldn't be here today because he can't be on camera and can't answer questions because he is directly uh, involved in local community in Boy Scouts and other um, community affairs. So if he was seen or noticed, it could actually negatively impact him. In a smaller city like Lansing, with a population of just under 120,000, people who practice pagan rituals say what they call coming out of the broom closet often comes with societal repercussions. Oh, coming oh. out of the broom closet. Yeah, coming out of the broom closet. Yes, yeah. coming out of the broom closet. It's kind of a spin on the phrase of coming out of the closet, as you would if you were, say, coming out to your family or relations as gay, as gay or bisexual or transgender or what, what have you. Coming out of the closet has become coming out of the broom closet because which is right on brooms. The leaders of this coven are Stefano Andriotti and Courtney Pepino, or Andriel and De Casteria by their Demonicos names. Demonicos is a tradition that they say they practice and teach monthly during their meetings at Holt. We work with the Greek, uh, the Greco-Roman pantheon. We work with the Norse pantheon, the Celtic. So we believe there's something to learn from just about uh, everything and it connects everywhere. For me specifically, and I, I think for many people is, we just want to feel connected. We want to feel connected to people, uh, ourselves. We want to know who we are, who other people are, uh, what the earth is. The craving for deeper connection is key for each member of this coven. I just felt that there was something more to life than just my nine to five job. There's something more to connect to. Whether it's connection to their community, earth, or gods and goddesses. This, uh, we use different crystals for different things. So the crystals that are completely clear and show no cloudiness are technically masculine crystals. Each person has their own beliefs and rituals. No, pagan, it really is a broad term. Um, I don't see myself personally as pagan. I think I have pagan leanings. I end up learning things that I shouldn't know. You know, you read people's minds, you, you come up with ideas, and things that no one has ever spoken about. All of a sudden you start speaking language and you start automatic writing that you've never thought of before. You know, the human mind is amazing. A pagan is defined as an individual who does not practice Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. But the group says the name pagan comes with the assumption by many that they worship the devil. It's all just superstition and fear. Members of the spiritual community say the root of this stereotype comes from a lack of information dating back to the Middle Ages, when Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire around the fourth century. It was looked down upon to continue worshiping Roman gods. People believed, and some still believe, that talking to gods, including Hades, is satanic. Hades, or Hades, uh, is the god of the underworld. He was the god of wealth. Hades is the, the god of the underworld and death in the sense of once you're dead. And so that can, that's fear. People are afraid of dying. So if you're worshiping him or you're working with him, some people see that as a negative thing where a lot of, like when I work with him, it's more because I connect with that energy and I understand the reflection that he is to Zeus. And it, it's taking things very literally and not well versing themselves on all the things that went into understanding what these things are. Research shows modern paganism is one of America's fastest growing religions with an estimated 1 million followers of various pagan beliefs around the United States. Uh, we really just want people to be themselves and feel comfortable coming to these pagan meetups because it's often very hard to find a place where you can feel comfortable being yourself, especially if your spirituality differs from mainstream. As long as you make an effort to study everything as thoroughly as possible, leave no stone unturned, you will find no evil that isn't absolutely necessary. 
Data from the Pew Research Center shows that younger generations are looking for more freedom in their spirituality, and they're contributing to the revitalization of paganism. The growing numbers of this spiritual community is an indication of that. They say, all are welcome. It feels really comforting and really just, just kind of warm. It's a really welcoming feeling. Coming from a Christian background, I know what is said and I know the judgment that can come with that, but I feel like that in this day and age, people should be open to all religions and finding what makes them comfortable. Everything is connected in some way, shape, and form. You just have to look hard enough to find it. And the Lansing area pagans say the best way to learn about them is by joining their Facebook page. They also have a tarot card reading event and a spiritual retreat coming up in July.